Okay, in this tutorial for new Blender users, we'll create a simple animation based on this setup that we have in here with the three cameras in the scene. And let's just take a review of it. Let's play it back from the beginning. And let's see. So there it's zooming in there. The camera's moving in. In this case, the camera's zooming in. You can see the zoom effect there. And there's the camera moving on the other shot. But when you zoom, the camera physically changes it's shaped like that. So on this camera move there I can see the camera is pointing a little bit too high so we can just adjust this in real time when it moves. So it's a little bit better maybe right about there. Let's see what happens when it comes around. Alright well that's pretty good. It's not that great but we'll just back it up a little bit because it's a little bit too close to the scene. There like that. It's very convenient. Blender is a really powerful system in there the way they've designed it to be interactive is really nice. Alright, well that's good for starters. So now the, to make the actual animation itself is we want to render either individual frames or we want to render it into a frame that kind of gets compressed on the fly and generates like an AVI file or a motion JPEG file so let's just see what we have here in this scene it, here's our camera view like this at any frame we're in here and we're running this through frame 1 or was that 146 1 to 146 something like that but we could also at any given time press F12 to kind of see what our scene looks like and that's oh, okay that's good enough or I might press here and press F12 again and see what it looks like it's like okay that's good enough it's just for a test and then to render, we'll come over here, let me move this up a little bit like this, to this button with the camera, the render button in here. Now if your menu doesn't look like this with this play button, it's because I'm using uh, 2.65a, so it's a fairly recent version. It is the most recent version actually, but even as early as recent as 2.63a, that play button did not exist there. So these change every once in a while. So I'm going to render this out as a say a 1280 by 720 image and that way I keep those resolutions that way so they play back easily on uh, notebook size computers because otherwise if you render it out at 1920 by 1080 then you limit the playback on certain computers and besides it's faster when I do it this way but I'm going to use a preset down in here I'll just use the 720p preset it changes it to 1280 by 720 at 100% this can be time consuming here for anti-aliasing but based on what we have in the scene that really won't matter as you saw how fast it took to render a single frame so I'll leave anti-aliasing on that takes away the jaggies like you see these jaggy jagged edges right there like that that's the stair stepping effect that's aliasing and when you put on anti-aliasing it takes away that effect let's render it and see if you see it up there I'll look in close when I've rendered it I can just hold down the wheel mouse and move it around in the scene and zoom in with the wheel mouse and you can see the anti-aliasing is taking effect so let me turn it off and re-render it and you can see this it's terrible so you want anti-aliasing on and let's try it at 16 samples and that's even nicer but we'll leave it down here for now but that's that's really important to have set up so I press the escape key to get back to my regular view. Okay, now we're in Blender Render, so we're just going to use the Blender Renderer instead of Cycles Render. But I've done that before, but it doesn't really matter as far as this is concerned. The frames, the way we set them up, it's all the same. Alright, so now, but the important thing is, is down here, the output. And this is going to tell you where it's going to put the files. And so if I just, I'm going to, by default it puts it in the slash TMP directory off of your C drive. Well normally I would recommend you always put things on a not on the C drive. In fact I happen to be putting things on the C drive right now because my D drive and beyond aren't functioning because my USB ports on my computer are I don't know they're goofed up and so I can't read my external drives so I'm temporarily using my C drive but that, that's a terrible habit to be in because if your system crashes or something and you have to reinstall your operating system at least for a PC's sake then you're going to write over that C drive but if you store it on a D partition or an E partition something like that then if you have to reinstall your operating system then you can re reinstall it on C and your data stays valid so I would recommend making a directory on your D drive or your E drive or something like that or external drive even 
but for but the main hard drive is ideal. So here's my directory for animation tests, and I'll just use that. So in here we have the start frame and the end frame set at 1 and 146 frames, which it matches this. If you change this here, it's going to change it up here as well. And then I'll change it to 20, 30 frames per second here in the U.S., though if you really need accurate timing, 29.97. And then in, uh, where is it down here? There's my animation test. And then for the file, right in here, I want to change this. It's going to output to a PNG file, and I don't want that right yet. Initially, I'm just going to do a test, and I'm going to make an AVI JPEG. And that'll compress it down to a, just a simple animation. All right, into the into this directory, and it's at RGB 90%, and that's good enough. So you just come up here and press the animation button. And let's see how long it takes, how fast this is. Well, frame two, three. Oh, so it's taken longer than I would think for such a simple object. You would think. So okay, forget that. We're gonna can that for a second. We're gonna turn off the anti-aliasing, and we're gonna do it again. All right, that's still taking too long. So you know what we're also going to do? I'm a, I don't want it that to be forever. Let's see. Where is my... Uh, I'm going to turn off the ray tracing. All right, now let's try it. Well, i tell you what. It seems to be taking forever. You know why? Because I'm spoiled. I'm used to working in Cycles Render, which is about five or six times faster when you use it, the GPU. All right, well, that's good enough. We're running a few frames, and that's all I needed to, to verify for the test. And then I'm going to escape that. And then I'm going to go look in that directory, the animation test directory. Where is it over in here? And there it is. There's the file. It says it's 1 to 146, but it's not all the frames if I run it. There's the, that's the animation we generated. So it immediately makes the animation for you. That's very convenient. All right, so, but however, if you want to do it frame by frame, which is really the ideal way to do it, let's do it back at a PNG file and just render some frames. And so now what it's doing, it's going to save individual files and it appends this frame number to it. And that's really the way to work because then you can generate uh, individual frames and you can maybe run frame 1 through 30, frames 1 through 30 on one computer, and maybe frames 31 to 60 on another computer, right? Or maybe you're running the whole thing and it's saving all the frames of the disk and you have a power outage and it dies, then you can just pick it back up and start up at the frame number that you wanted when you stopped. Okay, so let's stop that then here, and it's up to frame 37, so I should have 37 individual frames, there they are, right in that directory like that. All right, I made it to frame 38. So then you can bring these individual images into your video editor of choice and then do your own animation within that video editor like that. All right, well, I hope that helps, and um, I'll see you in the next lesson.